Welcome to Sunstar Games, the place to find new strategy games. And I asked you guys in a poll like whether you would like to see some non-strategy games and you guys said yes. So we're going to be checking out Vampire the Masquerade, Court Race of New York. Now this is based of a, on a tabletop RPG Vampire the Masquerade. It's, it's a very storytelling game, so it's going to kind of tell us what's happening, might have some sort of dialogue choices to do stuff, etc. Now this is a first look, because in adventure storytelling games, it's really not much of a point if it's not a first look, otherwise you get non-authentic directions and that's no fun. So let us begin. Let's start a new game. Now we can pick between different factions. We can play as the Bruja, the rebel rebel against power and rage against authority. A seemingly insignificant man with significant ideas will join their ranks tonight. Or in the Ventru faction, I presume? Aristocratic blue bots and body well sovereignty and control. A top level corporate executive will join their ranks tonight. Or the divas seal seek thrills of art, romance, and cruelty amidst then and death. Toreador. Uh, let's play for the, with the first guy. Yeah, let's do this. I want to do this. Our name is going to be Sam. Sure, let's go with that. Works for a man too, so let's do it. New York taught me to believe in faith. If you asked me about faith back when I was a human, I would have told you it's just superstitious nonsense that we are all designers of our own destinies. That belief shattered when the richest woman in the United States, the actual richest one, had a face you could have seen in the papers, of course, sank her teeth deep into my neck. It happened in the very same place you're standing in right now, by the way. Fate? You decide. Please, there's absolutely no need to be hostile. Just listen for a little longer. You see, my mistake was I flew too close to the sun. It makes sense that my punishment was to never see its glow again. Actually, I really like that. That's really funny. <laughs> I was incandescent myself. I was hot stuff and I had it all. Money, looks, confidence, connections, men, women, a career and a spark in the eye. The one you need to be born with. Oh, I still have the same confidence, man. And that's when someone far more powerful than me saw my radiance and thought, that won't do. He robbed me of the light erupting from within me and gave me a subtle enduring gleam in its place. Decided it would fit me much better. She was a nine-generation kindred, just like you, an apex predator. She probably enjoyed showing me a peak of human excellence, a real place in the food chain. It's such an eyesore when you look at some loudmouth ragged and see them for all they are. The temptation to teach them a lesson can be unbearable, right? <laughs> I've never had this feeling, but okay. <laughs> well, my size lesson was a lesson about fate, a message saying, you're eternally doomed to, to being at the mercy of your sovereigners. It almost drove me to destroy myself. What saved me was the ability to reinterpret her teachings. Hers wasn't a message of doom, it was a message of hope. Fate exists. One can shape it if given the right tools. My sire didn't believe my tools were fitting for the job. She considered them toys, and me? Just her amusing subject. But she's deader than dead now, and I'm still here, standing right where she stood when we first met. I might have wondered how I've learned about your arrival at JFK Airport. My answer is of course destiny. As luck would have it, today happened to be a day some of my associates were inspecting the coffins. Having you here straight from the plane and having you wake up in such an unfamiliar place was a little desperate, and I do apologize for it. But it's so rare for you to visit New York three times in the last 15 years, was it? And you're never eager to inform me you are here. Why would I? I understand you still have the that meeting on the 53rd Street later tonight, so I'll provide a comfortable transport. I value our relationship very much, don't get that wrong. But it's precisely because I value it that I'm going to ask you to repay the favor you owe me. You're the only one I trust to do the job well, and without attracting attention. You might think I'm crazy asking you to breach the rules of our society like this. You might think you won't get away with it unpunished. But this is New York, and I don't know about other cities, but in this one, fate really exists. And right now it's smiling in your favor. Well, this is how it begins. The music is pounding and your pulse is keeping pace. This is one of those nights that makes you feel alive even though it started with you feeling dead. Party time! First came the messy breakup. <laughs> then the realization they have nobody to talk to about how much it sucked. Still, we decided to roll with the punches. 
On Facebook, search for local events later and you'll find just the thing for your Malays. Short subway ride and you find yourself at the club just outside Dumbo. <laughs> That's a really good name for a club. <laughs> Not a fancy one, mind you. More like a slightly refurbished warehouse, but hey, at least the drinks are cheap. The DJ seems to really know his stuff too, alternating between cutting edge, industrial techno and classic Detroit called freezers, expertly feeling out everyone's mood. An hour passes. Yeah. Usually it feel awkward coming to a place like this alone, but tonight you find something soothing and joining the crowd, blending in even as you allow the beat to take over. Bum, 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 bum. Sweat, yours, other people's. Oh. Soaks through your shirt and pants in a matter of minutes. A thought pops into your head. From the outside, the fully packed club must seem like a stuffy, smelly nightmare, but here, in the thick of it, it becomes exhilarating. And you're not even on a pill tonight. <laughs> Good thing about that. With this Latina girl, most girls are accentuated by the light dress clinging to her body. She keeps bumping into you. Something tells you it only seems incidental. Gonna get a girl? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it's a good night. You wish it could last forever because you know all too well what the next day holds. Waking up, getting dressed for work, the commute, the 9 to 5 grind that will make you just enough money to pay the rent, keep living in your overpriced, useless excuse for an apartment. And with Jessica moving out, we'll all be coming out of your pocket. You run some quick calculations in your head and immediately come to regret that you did. Never mind. You spot the Latina again. She's now next to another guy hitting it off. Your chance of not going to bed alone. Gone. Just like that. Darn it. Your mood temporarily shut down and you leave the dance floor and stubble your way to the filthy bathroom. Take a look in the mirror and, wa in the mirror and wash your face obsessively. Over and over again. Just gotta be clean. I'm not clean. I gotta clean. Voice from the past echoes in your mind. Never felt like this with anyone. Seriously, I mean it. I feel like all of my relationships up to this point were test runs. This a uh, silly way to compensate for my low self self esteem. But this, this feels right. Finally. Shut up, Jess. This was the craziest day of my life. God, I need a smoke. Pass me a light. What do you mean? Cap suck the lighter? There's one in your mouth. Just shut up. This is not you. Not anymore. Oh, come on. This is so like you. Acting like some sort of Clint Eastwood wannabe when I really need you to open up. Think you're impressing people with this tough guy act? Darn you. I know how broken you really are. You need therapy. Yeah, now that sounds like the Jessica of today. You raise your head and look in the mirror. You try to smile, but all you can muster is a self-pitying grin. How dare she talk to me like that. There she is. The Latina from before. She says you look like you need a drink. You hesitate for a second or two and then blurt out a surprisingly enthusiastic, yeah. You start to talk. It quickly becomes evident that she's into politics and you're eager to please. You might be a corporate drone, but you spend a lot of evening reading theory, actual theory, not Twitter cliff notes, and organizing for all manners of causes online. Status quo is not great. There must be something better, she agrees. You seem to subscribe to the same progressive political theories have compatible ideas about the DSA missteps even watch the same YouTube channels. Oh yeah, like this one. <laughs> Your goals are aligned. She's a bit more radical than you'd have guessed. You attend a few rallies, been to a few protests, but this girl sounds like she broke a share of faces and kicked more than a couple of apps in the nuts over the course of her activist career. Wowza! Alright, you might want to slow down with her a bit. Nazila's infectious. She taps into pent up anger that she didn't know you had. The noisy club stops working for you both, so you hit the streets. As you're leaving, the DJ starts playing all the things she says. <laughs> it's all the things she said is, is a song about, you know, all the things she said. It's just kind of fitting because it was like in our head about Jessica. There's a lot more to that song, but we'll leave it. Uh, of course, you chuckle to yourself, trying not to slip into a bad headspace. She chuckles along with you. It's chilly outside, but soon enough, you find yourself too invested in listening to the girl's voice to care about anything else. You realize you've been holding hands for a while. Subby car is empty, save for a stoic middle-aged couple and a drunk staring intently at his own feet. Plenty of room to stretch out, and yet, he sits right next to you. You can feel her- ooh, okay. You can feel her tie pressing into yours, her breath on the side of your neck. Maybe it's the boost talking, but you distinctly hear your voice asking if she'd like to crash at your place. I got a better idea, she says. At this point, you're down for anything as long as it lets you spend just a few more minutes with her. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to read this part, you know? She takes you to a sleazy motel in the Bronx, writing a few words with the balding, tired-looking guy at the front desk. 
He hands her a key. Still holding your hand, the woman leads you up the stairs. The room you end up in is almost com comically stereotypical, complete with flaking, pain and sticky floor. Not that it matters, though. The moment you step through the door, she's on you. Okay. She takes the lead. <laughs> Alright, I guess this is important for the story. Your hands reach under her t-shirt, strange. It didn't look like she was cold outside, but now her skin feels eerily cool. As if sensing her confusion, she slaps your hands off of her. Okay? Are we not doing stuff today? She kisses your neck. You're overwhelmed by the sensation. Darkness. <laughs> this did not go well for us. <laughs> Taste of liquid fire and smoke on your tongue. Her voice says, Sorry, kid. I did what I had to do to leave this city in one piece, but don't worry. With my blood and your principles, you're gonna do just fine. She slams the motel room door behind her as she leaves. <laughs> you all help you lie helpless on the soil, lying in mattress for some time. Minutes? Hours? Before you can focus enough to try and piece together your evening, it hits you. The big hunger. Grapes you by the throat and makes your inside shrivel in terror. It's an all encompassing emptiness that throws you on all fours. You curl for a while, squirm on the floor in sundering pain, then jump to your feet and bust out a door. You black out. This isn't the room you saw when you last close your eyes. Somebody curses at you, a small naked buff dude holding a short leather whip. Wow, pretty goofy. He throws a punch. He yells out several slurs. He hits you in the jaw. You black out again. The guy isn't moving anymore. There's blood on his neck. There's blood on his arms. There's blood on the floor. There's blood everywhere. Wow. Whoever did this is one sick puppy. You realize you're sitting on top of his corpse. Was it me? Did I do that? You hear a whimper. <laughs> Someone else is there. A woman. Her arms are tied to the bed frame, an eye mask over her face, red marks on her back. This time you see it happen. You want to stop but can't. She almost manages to get a scream out, but it dies in her throat as you bite into the side of her neck. You drink. Blood. You're drinking blood. You could swear you feel her life escaping your body, entering yours. Suddenly terrified, a tear away from her. She's not moving, but she's breathing. There's barely a mark on her neck. The guy on the floor is out. You double over in spasm, realizing what she did. You feel like throwing up, but you can only gag. And except then another realization dawns on you. Your heart is not beating. You put two fingers on your wrist. Come on, come on, just let me feel it. Just a little bit. But you feel no pulse. Same thing on your neck. Nothing. There's no breath coming out of your mouth. What is happening? What is happening, guys? You have to get out. It's someone to call an ambulance for yourself at least. Probably too late for the dude on the floor. Did you really kill him? What a mess. You look up the door to, to the room is a jar. A tall, handsome, broad-shouldered man fills the entire frame. He brushes an imaginary speck of dirt of his perfectly tailored suit. Call 911! Hey man, you gotta help me! Call 911! So that you could get arrested and report as jail suicide within the next 24 hours? Because that's the only way that plays out, son. He surveys the room, not moving an inch from where he's standing. Shakes his head in mock concern. Murder. Assault. 25 to life if you're lucky. But since you're not, it's a death sentence. Takes a glance at his expensive looking watch. Lucky for you, it's been a slow night. Otherwise, I might not have gotten here in time. Come on. The sun comes up in a few hours. You don't want to be around here when it does. Uh, the sun? What's the matter with the sun? When the sun comes up. You look pretty great, by the way. Ah, so you don't even know? You should be glad I got here before you made yourself scarce. The man approaches you and starts talking. His tone remains unnaturally calm. Oddly enough, you find it both soothing and slightly unnerving. Now listen to me. I know this is all new to you, but I've dealt with hundreds of strays like you. Going up by experience, they tend to fall into two categories. First, they're the smart ones who carefully obey my every word and don't try to pull off anything stupid. Always get them where they need to be, safe and sound. And then there are the dumb ones. The punk who thought they could take me on. The wise guys who try to contact somebody secretly and without permission. The troublemakers. That's not a one type, that's three types. Who try to run off or make a scene. None of them got to their destination in one piece. In fact, most of them never reached their destination at all. The voice becomes slightly bored and monotone. You can tell he's given this speech before, likely a dozen of times. 
So you see, though, I generally consider myself pretty smart. I'm also a maths fan. My want or weakness, one that inspired me to come up with three strike system when dealing with pups like you. You get on my nerves once or twice, well I understand, when all of us perform well in stressful situations. But cross me three times and you're out. No excuses, no forgiveness, no mercy. As he's talking, he slowly approaches you, ad adding a bit of theoretical swagger to his walk. Eventually he leans in, deliberately invading your personal space. Like, step away, man. You realize it's a test. He's daring you to do something about it. Can we bite him in the neck? <laughs> Three strikes and you're out. Say, so I understand, sir, now. I've never been too eager to bend the knee to anyone but this. To something else. The man's very presence instill a primal fear in your heart. I guess I understand, sir. Glad we have an understanding. Moving on. Is there anyone you'd want to inform of your current situation? Tell them you're alright? Flashes his fangs briefly, and for some reason the sight sends a chill down your spine. There's something very wrong about him. Someone closest to you? Uh, I don't think we need to tell our ex-girlfriend that we are a murderer and a person who assaults people, because she already left us when we, when we were a good guy. We don't have a girlfriend, because the girlfriend we thought might be the woman we might have a relationship with. Did this to me, so we'll lie. Jerry. Jerry. Yes. Who is this Jerry? Granting mine is drawing a blank. Oh, J Jer Jerry. Jerry is a man of many faces. <laughs> we are so bad at lying. <laughs> I guess it's our first strike, huh? <laughs> the stranger gives you a tired stare. Lying to me is a strike, Wolf. I, I never want to tell my ex-girlfriend. I guess we'll tell our ex-girlfriend. Jessica, my ex-girlfriend. She kinda hates my guts, but yeah, I suppose it would be her. Stranger gives you a puzzled look and decides to prod further. The closest person in your life hates her guts? This time something is resembling a look of pity. He turns his eyes to the corpse on the floor. When it rains, it pours, I suppose. But if you'd like to run her day and let her know you're alright, give me your phone number. I'll have someone take care of it. Discreetly, of course. No! <laughs> <laughs> That's a silly decision. We're handing your smartphone so we can copy the number from your list of contacts. Thank you. This will be useful in illustrating my next point. He's gonna kill her. Is he gonna kill her? I think he's gonna kill her. Instead of giving you back your phone, the man hides it in his pocket. From this point on, you're subject to different laws than the ones you grew up under. You'll be watched by many eyes to ensure these laws are respected. You're forbidden from letting anyone know you're still alive. You're forbidden from showing your face anywhere they know you. If anyone comes looking for you, it's over for both you and them. Well, good thing our, our ex-girlfriend will stay alive. I'm happy about that. He interrupts his monotone recitation and stares deep into your eyes. So, unless you want your girlfriend to end up at the bottom of the Hudson, I would suggest your cooperate. Ex-girlfriend, she dumped me. He proudly displays his fangs again. You've put Jess in danger. But darn it. I can only hope that you care for her enough to not do anything selfish. Yes! I was trying not to tell you about her in the first place, but th that apparently didn't work. His words are meant to imply otherwise, but by now it's obvious. He hates you. As much as you hate him. He's itching for a fight and you're almost willing to oblige. You're not foolish. Alright, I think that's enough lecturing for today. We're on a bit of a schedule here. Now I don't need to hurt you, but I can do so in the blink of an eye. Really? Did we need that part? We know, man. Just so that we're clear. I have the authority to end you, right here, right now. It's not an idle threat, so you're going to play along, or do you have to do it the hard way? Follow him on? You were changing chances, but it does not promising. The guy's fit, determined, and looks like he means business. You, on the other hand, are confused, exhausted, and on the verge of a panic attack. Yeah, fine, I'll go with you. Almost looks disappointed. Wise decision, follow me, please, and close the door behind you. Take one final look at the woman who's just coming to and the body on the ground. This is a mess. Absolute mess. You pull the handle and close the door. The man leads you downstairs. You contemplate signally, signaling the bald guy at the front desk, but he's too busy watching some 90s action flick on a small ancient looking TV. He seems totally oblivious to your presence. Also, I'm pretty sure they picked the motel in a place where they wouldn't really mind about it, so I don't think he would be helpful. You hear a dejected John claude von Damme say, I just want to go home, as they're walking by. Your would-be kidnapper stops by the door and addresses you before opening it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking as soon as he opens the door, I'm making a run for it. Maybe I can outrun him. I'll save you the trouble. You can't. 
and either get inside my car and I'll get you to where you need to be, or you can totally try something stupid that you'll regret later. Do I make myself clear? Let's go with no promises. No promises. Let's call this one half a strike. Don't push it. <laughs> really? We can't even be... <laughs> can't even be cheeky. He opens the door and gets just a black Cadillac Escalade parked right outside the building. After you. We'll get inside. Mm. Let's make a run for it. We have two and a half strikes now. An instinct tells you to run. And you listen, but just a few seconds later, that same in instinct is telling you something else. That someone right behind you. For a split second, it all becomes a blur. Knocked down, you fall into the filth and crusted pavement. As you're trying to get up, letting it out a string of bloody spittle, you hear a disappointed sigh. You are doing so well. This counts as a strike, of course. Shall we go now? Following the stranger's instruction, you make your way to the cart and get into the passenger seat. The door locks behind you. Inside the Cadillac, it's almost entirely dark. The side window seems light proof. The man gets in the driver's seat, starts the engine, drives away without another word. Did I die? The afterlife, isn't it? Not entirely wrong, but it's not what you think. Waste his next word carefully. You have to forgive me. Not in the mood to wax poetic. About the state you are in or my role in tonight's event. Just remember, you want to survive the next 24 hours? You'll have to play along. This is a f nightmare. <laughs> Strange smirks. Understand that this is for your own good. Times with being what they are, you should consider yourself lucky. Drive in silence for about 20 more minutes as exhausting coaches off with you and the streetlight fade into a blur. Eventually the car stops and the doors open. You emerge from your dreamlike state and find yourself in some kind of an underground parking garage. You two are the only ones here. The man points to a nearby door. Go in, make yourself comfortable. If you get hungry again, Take a look in the fridge. Pick you up tomorrow, and you'll get your answers. Behind the door is a small room. No windows, just an empty, just a simple bed, and a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling. A small fridge is humming away in the corner, accompanied by a rattling AC fan in the wall. Guess I have to trust you. Guess I have no choice but to trust you. Took you this long to figure it out? Remember, when I said you were lucky, I meant it. See, my job is to get rid of problems, but I'm always, not always this polite about it. This time, I was specifically told to mind my manners. So believe me when I tell you, considering how this night could have turned out, being stuck in here for a night is a really good deal. Now get in or I'll throw you in. Walk inside. Good night. Closes the door behind you. It looks sturdy, but as he's locking it, you notice claw marks all over. Looks like some previous guests were unsatisfied with their stay. You decide not to dwell on it. And check the fridge. There's a single plastic bag in there filled with red liquid. No label. Tomato soup? Really? You haven't figured that part out yet? You feel sick to your stomach. Best to leave it now. Have you not heard anything about vampires, man? Come on. I guess we're a bit slow on the uptake. You lie down on the bed, it's a simple mattress on the metal frame. Can't help but think it looks exactly like the one back at the hotel with the bound woman. Ooh. Oh right, you killed a man tonight, or did you? Maybe none of this is real, maybe it's on a barrel and elaborate prank. The girl at the club, Chess, might have put her up to it. <laughs> is that the kind of ex-girlfriend we had that she makes this kind of pranks? <laughs> Those guys clearly in on it, too. Now he's back with them and they're all laughing their butts off. You don't know what to think anymore, your mind races but you're too tired to keep going. Finally you tense up one last time before drifting away into oblivion. And I think this is a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it and you can click on the right top to watch Wanderlust which is another storytelling game or you can click on the right bottom to watch New Play City. I'll see you there, bye bye!